Good morning, everyone. Welcome back if you're back. Hello if you're new. I hope you decide to join us. We have a, a few laughs here. Um, you guys, I have been trying to shoot this video all morning. I swear if my phone runs away, if my phone rings one more time, I'm running away and I'm leaving the phone here. <laughs> I'm everybody's therapist this morning. Anyway, she is done. Here she is. Let's go. Let's get this going now because Crimson is waiting. She's waiting. She's waiting to get out of the box. <laughs> Let's get it going. There she is. Miss Lilac. Let me see if I can roll this back and get her all in. Oh, look at that. Look how smart I am. I put my table on wheels. Here she is, completely done, ready to be framed, ready to go on my wall for my holiday. Oh my gosh, is there, there's one missing. Okay, so hang out with me. I got all these extra drills here <laughs> that were all a mess. Um, she's ready to be framed and she's ready to, oh my gosh, I lied. There's some more here. <laughs> well, here we go. You, you, I, I saved that part for you. That's what I'm going to edit. I saved that part for you. Then I could call it finished. So she's ready to be framed and put on my wall. I'm still deciding about what the uh, border is going to be. Um, I know the easiest thing for me is washi tape. You know, it just is. And it would be easy for me if I decide that I'm going to hang her in uh, my window because then I could use my um, museum putty. Wow, I'm really off today. You know what? The music's not even on. How about that? Um, yeah, it was just a crazy morning, let me tell you. I, I mean, I was all, you know, up. I, mean, I always get my upstairs done before I come down the steps. So that at least I can feel accomplished with something. Now the cat wants to go crazy. And um, I'm, you know, I'm coming down the steps. I'm ready to throw the laundry in. And, and um, you know, and, and my husband calls and he's like, are you downstairs? I'm like, yes, I'm downstairs. He's like, you need to check the door. Are my keys there? I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I start saying a novena as I'm walking down the steps because he, he, anymore he just goes into, he needs to join self-care Sunday is what he needs to do. Um, he just gets into this panic where he just starts to unravel. And, you know, I'm like, oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, please let there be keys behind the door. And there aren't. So he's in a panic. Do I have this one out? Yeah. He's in a panic that um, he can't find his keys and he needs his keys to his locker because his keys to his locker are, is where he keeps his uniform. Where'd it go? Am I coming back for you? Where are you? Where'd you go? I just saw you. Um, and so I have to tell him, no, there aren't, there are no keys here. And, um, He's, he's hanging up the phone very calmly, but I know that he's not calm. I know that he's panicked. I can hear it. Where are his keys? Um, and, you know, I, I'm joking, but his problem is my problem until he finds what he lost. And I know he's going to find it as soon as he can calm down. And, sh you know, sure enough, like, stop running around. Like, just retrace your steps. But he doesn't even want to talk to me on the phone because... He's so panicked he can't think and he's at work and he's got to get, you know, his stuff done. And so now I'm, I'm, even though I know that he has them, um, I'm, I'm saying, let me go outside. Let me check. Maybe he dropped them walking out of the house. Um, you know, something, anything. And of course he calls me like within 20 minutes that he found them. So that was the morning. And then my son called me, and then my mother called me, and then I don't even know who else called me. Uh, my girlfriend Pam called me from, from Washington. How about that? We were just talking about Washington the other day. And um, 
you know, this, these are not people that I talk to often, so I make time for them. Well, Pam is it. My mother is. <laughs> but uh, then my son, you know, he, he, he takes his breaks in the morning, and so he calls me and checks in. And now I'm done. Now you're done, my sweetheart. Now you are done. Um, and so that was pretty much the morning. I was like, I really, you know, I am so excited just to finish um, Lilac. I'm so excited to get Crimson going. I'm so excited to give you guys a review of uh, how I felt about this canvas and um, how I felt about Dreamer Designs and, and the rendition. Well, you know that I love it and you know that I love her and I love Curtis Reykjavich's, um artwork and I've already seen something that I want from him and to save it for the summer it's actually a mermaid and I was saying yesterday while I was uh, doing my whipping chat that if you see something from dreamer designs that I can't seem to get information or an answer from their customer service I'm going to send it out again that um, there were designs that I wanted from another artist and very curious to see if they're getting them back or getting more of his artwork and I can't seem to get an answer. So um, this was low stock as of a few days ago, but Crimson, I believe, is she sold out? Oh, I think she sold out. One of them is sold out. Crimson or I can't keep it all straight. Crimson or uh, Lilac. Lilac is sold out. Crimson as well. I'm almost sure that that's the story. And they're not getting them back. That you When you go on their site, it might say get notified. But when you click that, it says, sorry, we're no longer carrying this item. And I'm like, what? You know, Curtis Reykjavich is one of their biggest uh, artists that they have there. So, um, I, you know, if it's marketing, it's, it's genius that you would say, you know, if you see this and you like it and you want it, buy it because it's not going to be here. And if it sells out, we're not getting more. That seems to be what's going on. Um, I had stopped gluing down my uh, diamond paintings as far as Diamond Art Club was concerned. And I thought that I was not going to do that with this one. With this one, I can tell you that I don't feel that my diamonds are as secure as they are with Diamond Art Club. There's something about when I'm placing, especially when I do a single placing, I can see that the, the glue forms around the drill and then it eventually cures. But if I run my hand because I'm trying to feel, are there any little lumps or bumps? Like I have one right here that needs to be pushed in. Well, it, it's lifted up. Um, and then I don't feel confident that it's going to stay down. Because it seems like in this area here, I've been going back and, you know, pressing down gems. Now I do also have a roller that I use. It's in my drawer here to make sure that my diamonds are pressed down. However, I never really hear a click that, oh yeah, there it is. You get, like, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't it. But I never really hear a click that, oh, there was a diamond that was popped up and I got it down. Um, also, I must have been leaning on some exposed part where the oils from my arm just made that area dull. And when I go to put the glue on top, like there's another few spots right here where I could feel it's popped up. It doesn't feel right. And I think I'm actually going to take this off. Nope, there it is. Um, I know also that, the, again, here I just felt like something popped up. Did it? So like this was real time. I'm not going to edit any of this out. You know, I'm a very tactile person. So I like, I could feel these drills are all smooth. None of the drills are popping up, but I think I'm still going to steal her because this is a keepsake for me. I want to have this for years to come and 
take this out and I'm not really a I'm not heavy holiday decor I like things that are very simple I like poinsettias I like candles I like having my tree but I don't go all out with all the lights and the boughs of holly I like very simple elegance I think probably because I was living in New York for you know a few holiday seasons and I just kind of learned how to minimize my things and then just enjoyed it more I, mean, I, I I still like having spaces that if I need to entertain that they're available to me um so I, I, I mean I I love the color I love the background I love the watercolor effect and you know I sat down yesterday and I kind of opened up my journal here to look at the similarities between um, crimson and lilac. I mean, they're they're they juxtapose each other, but they also complement one another. Lilac is the round. I'm going into square with crimson. They do share a lot of colors between them. I think there's about 18 colors in crimson that are also in lilac. And you know, where lilac to me is that watercolor effect. Um, crimson to me, the background looks like a oil. Uh, if you look at her background, and I did add it up yesterday, there's about 13 or 14 colors in crimson that are different shades of gray, whether they're like a beaver gray or a shell gray or a pink gray. It's a very, if you look at the background when I take her out, it's a very um, oil, it, it looks like oil to me, especially when I look at the picture. Let me see if I have a picture of her right here. There's kind of like, it's very, um, the clouds are very thick, but they also have like a brush stroke that makes it look like oil. Even in the snowy uh, field behind her, and then the trees are even heavier in snow. So I'm so curious to get that started and, and see them both together. You know, Lilac is a gorgeous diamond painting. And Curtis Reykjavich, his art is so distinctive and I really enjoy his work. And Dreamer Designs did a lovely job on the canvas right down to the drill tray. Uh, um, Dreamer Designs, please sell your wax <laughs> because I love it. I say it all the time. It's like a cross between a wax and a putty. I just, I just adore it. Um, I purchased Lilac and Crimson together, envisioning them both being displayed together as part of my holiday de decor. And you know, I was saying yesterday when I was thinking about my border, like what kind of border I wanted. And I was also taking into consideration that it has that scallop edge. And there's also something very cartoonish about this <laughs> painting. It reminds me of like, if you had stepped in a cartoon, like this is what you would see as a painting on the cartoon's wall um, as like maybe a, an ancestor. <laughs> um, but I looked at what when I was doing this yesterday and I was comparing them both and looking for similarities and differences. And I'm like, what really drew me to this painting? And instantly, I can tell you instantly what drew me to this painting was this muff here. I'm hoping that I have um, a picture of me when I'm like around two or three years old. Every coat that my father bought me had a muff. And I was adamant as a child that um, I had to have a muff and I just love that it's adorned with these purple bows. It just, you know, when you had a muff as a child, it was attached to your coat by a string and I think it went around the back of your neck and you always had your muff hanging in front of you. And, and, you know, I've seen them now for older women, um, that, um, they have these beautiful muffs now and you, and when you go out, you would just wear it on your arm. And when you went outside, you would put both your arms in. They're really pretty. I want to see if I could um, get one. But it was a muff, and it was the memory of my father always buying me uh, a coat with a muff on it. Um, the hairband is what attracted me next because my husband actually bought me actually the same thing. It, it's this white hairband with this faux fur 
and I think when I wear it this year, I'm going to put a pretty brooch on it um, with a ribbon <laughs> um, to dress it up. It's very casual, and I have to tell you, every time I wear it, people stop me, and they're like, oh, wow, I just love your outfit because it, it has um, the fur to go around my boots. But if I have a picture of that, we actually, this year, I'm going to put a picture. <laughs> would have been really funny if you turned on your your video today and saw me sitting here with that with that <laughs> fur on my head. I would have if it wasn't 70 degrees out today. You know, it's like, what, November 17th? Well, I guess. You know, my husband and I go out often, and brooches are so hot right now that even the men are wearing them. They're, they're, they're ditching the lapels. They're ditching the flowers and the corsages, and they're wearing... Uh, brooch is what I just I just think is fabulous. I just think it's such a unique um, uh, little accent for a man to wear like this gorgeous brooch and just you know it just looks so good, especially when they're dressed up in a tux. It just looks fabulous. Um, even though you know I love long hair, this um, hair, this blue black hair, and the blue eyes reminded me so much of my girlfriend Denise first and believe it or not Elizabeth Taylor second and Elizabeth Taylor had that dark blue black hair and those gorgeous violet eyes but my girlfriend Denise um, became an actress and she was a fan of Elizabeth Taylor and she changed her last name to Taylor it was her stage name Denise Taylor and her hair was this gorgeous blue black and so the hair reminded me um, so much of my girlfriend. I love the vibrant pinks and and lavender that you know play off this soft watercolor effect. Van Gogh used to do that. He has a painting that's a very soft pastel background, and the the the, the uh, vase is full of these vibrant uh, roses. I think they might be. I'm trying to remember from the Barnes Museum. It's just so, I mean, the, the watercolor effect and the pink and the gray are not as, it's not so much of a difference, but it is a lovely backdrop to the vibrancy that is, you know, our focal point, our, our girl here, our, our royal. <laughs> she is a royal, you know, and it's, it makes me wonder when I look at this, like the way that she's looking out, like, what is she doing, our fabulous lilac? Is she going to a party? Is she just out for a snowy little walk? Is she going maybe ice skating? Um, is she visiting friends? Um, you know, but I think that maybe she's just arrived at this, you know, winter wonderland and it's a destination place for a lovely holiday filled with festivities and family and friends and, um, someone took a picture of her to capture her beauty and to set all the available suitors hearts aflame <laughs> so i have an active imagination <laughs> but this is our girl and um thank you uh lilac for a very enjoyable experience and dreamer designs and curtis reykovich um i think that they did justice doing justice not only to your customer but also your artist is the highest compliment I think you can give a company so Miss Lilac um, it's toodles for you you're getting hung up <laughs> and um, I will be back later today with Crimson now another thing that I'm going to do and I should add this to my 100 list is I am getting ready to do one of my favorite things when it comes to diamond painting I love to kit up and I love to kit down and so this case all these uh, extra drills are going into bags and then this whole case and all these cases inside I will take the lids off I have some empties in here I will take the lids off I will pop the tops off and I will throw them in hot soapy water to get the labels off and to give them a good clean and to start fresh and new with the next kit that gets kitted up in here. But Crimson's already kitted up, so I'm going to say toodles <laughs> to you and um, get Crimson out because I'm so excited I can't even get the lid on my Elizabeth Ward case. <laughs> 
I'm so excited I can't even eat a cookie. So, um, yep, I will be back. I will be back and we'll be having some fun now for at least the next month with um, Crimson. If you're not part of Jingle Drills, it kicked off today. And um, if you have a winter canvas that's a fresh start for Jingle Drills, join the fun, join the party, or you can join the winter uh, diamond painting along with the diamond stitcher and Alyssa and you don't that's going to start in December and you don't need a fresh start for that one so two events that I'm really happy to participate in so I will see you shortly bye guys bye lilac <laughs>